No, no, no. The Ortiga is nice, but I'm supposed to shoot something a little bit more macho. Something that has more muscle. Now that's more like it. What we have here is a Suzuki Ortiga that spends too much time in the gym, bench presses 300 pounds, and drinks a dozen eggs every day. If you find that the Ortiga looks a little bit too tame in terms of looks, well, maybe this baby will float your boat. Friends, the Suzuki XL7 GLX. Let's do this. Hello guys, I'm Reagan and we are here now at Suzuki Manila Bay to do a full tour and drive impression of the all-new Suzuki XL7. Suzuki has some truly fun and quirky little cars, so if you have a huge Suzuki craving, well then head on down here to Suzuki Manila Bay and check them out. Or you may contact the person in my description below. What I have here is a Suzuki XL7, which is basically an Ortiga that became a bit more buff. The XL7 is still an MPV that has received the full SUV treatment. Sure, MPVs are practical and affordable people haulers, but there's still something about an SUV that truly really gets the blood going, especially for daddies who want a little bit more road presence in their rides. The XL7 that we have here is a sole variant, which is the GLX variant, and this baby retails for 1,068,000 Philippine pesos. Sure, it's a wee bit more expensive than your standard Ortiga, but hey, those body claddings, they don't come for free. When you look at the XL7, it's not like Suzuki slapped on some body cladding on an Ortiga and called it a day. The XL7 sports a totally different front look from that of the Ortiga. It starts off with this blacked out front grille here with your Suzuki logo right there and a nice chrome center line that gives off a truly premium vibe. In my sporty opinion guys, I find the XL7's front grille looks way better than the ones found in the Ortiga. Again, in my own sporty opinion. The XL7 also has a different headlight housing design and the sole variant we get in the Philippines has LED headlights, LED DRLs, but you have to make do with halogen fog lights and a halogen turn signal. The fog lights are surrounded by this body cladding right here and you also have this uh, matte aluminum front skid plate in the center that finishes off that rugged look. Overall, the front fascia of the XL7 shares a little bit more design cues with the larger Vitara than the Ortiga that it's based on. And for me, that is a welcome design approach. Now you can't pull off that SUV look without adding some black plastic claddings and in that regard, the XL7 obliges. You get huge plastic claddings here on your front and rear fenders and you also get some here at the lower part of your doors. Thankfully, the ones found on your doors have been broken off by this nice silver trim that kind of looks like stepboards. They actually look pretty good. You also have a design cue here on your front fender that can also be found in the Suzuki Vitara, which ties it with that Suzuki SUV. Now, to add to that SUV vibe, well, the XL7 gets functional roof rails here. Yep, they are functional. Now, when it comes to wheels and tires, you get 16 inches for your wheels that's wrapped in 19560 R16 tires, which I must admit are a little bit on the skinny side. Behind those wheels, you get ventilated brake disc up front and rear drum brakes at the back. When it comes to ground clearance, guys, well, the XL7 has been lifted by 20 millimeters from the Ortiga because this baby now has a ground clearance of 200 millimeters. Overall, when you look at the side of the XL7, well, it's basically an Ortiga with some Vitara cues and also a little bit more muscle. The XL7 gets some design cues here at the rear that separates it from the Ortiga that it was based on. It gets this glossy piano black finish here at the top of your lift gate that gives off a truly sporty vibe. The LED tail lights here are also the same ones that are found in the Ortiga, but the rear bumper receives a totally different design treatment. You get vertical reflectors here at the side that also has some notches that makes it look a little bit more muscular. You also have your body claddings here and the rear skid plate that ties up with the ones found at the front. Now when you pop open your lift gate, 
you see that with the third row up, you get 153 liters of trunk capacity, which can go up to as much as 200 liters if you include the storage that's found underneath the floorboard. Now, this is pretty cavernous. Now, in order to find out what 153 liters actually look like in real life, well, guys, I brought with me a hand carry luggage, and let's now do Reagan's luggage test. So, this hand carry luggage would easily fit behind the seat backs of the storage row and you could put a second hand carry luggage right here and some small items underneath your floorboard. Now, if you need more space than 153 liters, you could always tumble down the storage row and these babies fold flat and now you will now have access to 550 liters of trunk capacity. Now, I didn't really bring any large suitcase with me, just this small baby here because, well, I drove my Miata going to this shoot and there's no way I'm going to be able to fit a large suitcase inside a tiny car. So we'll have to make do with this tiny baby. I'll put it here in the middle just to show you the scale well, of what 550 liters looks like in real life. If you need more space than 550 liters, you could always tumble down the second row seats and that should give you a little bit more than 800 liters of trunk capacity. The XL7 benefits from the larger engine that also found its way in the second generation Ertiga. What we have here is a 1.5 liter four cylinder petrol engine that's good for 103 horses and 138 newton meters of torque. Now, take a good look at that engine because, guys, this is exactly how an engine bay should look like. None of that fancy schmancy engine covers that you can find in most modern cars nowadays. And I really find it funny how they didn't even put a uh, well, a manifold cover here for your headers and instead they just put there, well, a sign that says hands off if ever you want to preserve your fingers. Now, the GLX variant that we get here only has a single transmission option and that would be a four-speed automatic, which truly reflects, well, the utilitarian nature of the Suzuki XL7. That four-speed auto was a decision by Suzuki because, well, it's a proven transmission and it is really great and optimal when it comes to hauling heavy loads or in this case, seven people. The XL7's quoted fuel economy figure stands at around 9 to 10 kilometers per liter in heavy city driving, and you can get as much as 20 kilometers per liter in highway driving. When you step inside the cabin of the XL7, you'll see that it looks exactly like the Artiga, except you get some added bits and pieces here and there. The XL7 gets these fabric covered uh, seats here, but your bolsters and your headdress are actually covered in leather, which would help the bolsters retain its shape. From your seat, you also have a leather wrapped steering wheel here that has a beautiful gunmetal design at the bottom part. Now, speaking of bottom part, guys, the wheel is also a flat bottom steering wheel, which makes it an overall gorgeous looking steering wheel. You also get some audio controls here and some buttons as well for your Bluetooth calling. From your wheel, we head on to your instrument gauges and you see, you see here you have a couple of analog gauges for your tachometer and your speedometer and it has a nice multi-information display screen in the middle that shows you your vital stats as well as some information that's normally reserved for a sports car. You see the XL7 has a G-Force meter and it also comes with a braking and acceleration meter as well and it also has another screen that shows you your engine output and even your torque output. I mean, it seems like the XL7 took a page from one of these racing or track racing apps out there and slapped it on into that multi-information display. Uh, that way, guys, you could just take this out to the speedway and be ready for a track day. Well, not that you'd be taking this baby out to the speedway, guys, but at least with that G-Force meter, you'd be able to track like how much G-Force you're generating whenever you take that hot corner in your supermarket driveway. Now, from your uh, instrument gauge system here, you move on to your infotainment system, and you can see here that Suzuki is not afraid to give us a little bit more tech that could at least run with some of the Korean and Chinese competitors. The XL7 gets a 10-inch touchscreen system here that has Bluetooth calling, Bluetooth connectivity yeah and it also has phone mirroring for your Android and Apple devices and it also comes with the rear view camera that has a pretty decent definition in terms of the screen from there you move down to your climate control system and you have here a more modern approach you got a couple of uh, rotary knobs here for your fan speed and your temperature setting as well as some buttons as well to operate your climate control from there you go down to a 12 volt uh, ports and a USB port as well and you also have a couple of squarish looking, really tiny looking cup holders. Now, let's try it with our clean canteen test just to see if these uh, cup holders will be able to house 
my clean canteen flask. So I'm going to put this here. As you can see, it doesn't really fit all the way in. It could only accommodate like a quarter of the space and then it stops there. So for the clean canteen test, well, it is a, it's a fail, guys. So I'm actually quite surprised because normally I don't really have any issues with the cup holders coming from, well, Japanese car makers. But, well, in the Suzuki XL7, wouldn't fit this baby at all. From there, you got your gear shifter here that has a urethane finish. It's not a leather finish as well. You also have here a standard looking handbrake and a center uh, armrest here that's wrapped in leather, as well as well a center console here that could probably house maybe a couple of tic tacs. That's, that's how small this baby is. Now, when you look at the overall layout of the cabin, you'll see that yes, the XL7 looks exactly like the Ertiga, but you do get some uh, carbon fiber finishes here on the center dashboard and on your door panels, which gives it a sportier, more masculine look. Now let's head over to the back seat and see what kind of space and toys your kids would expect from the XL7. Now the backseat space of the X07 benefits from the same cavernous backseat that can be found in the Ertiga. One of the things that I noticed with this baby is how huge the passenger doors are. I mean, this should help very well when it comes to the entry and exit coming into and out of the X07. In terms of, well, your actual space here at the back seat, you got a great amount of headroom here. I got like close to eight, maybe nine inches before I touch my head, the headliner here. And the knee room and leg room are also quite great as well. This is my normal driving position here. I'm five foot six, and as you could see, I got a great amount of uh, space overall. When it comes to toys, guys, you'd be happy to know that you've got a really long array of, well, AC vents here up top, and you also have your own individual controls here. So needless to say, guys, that the people at the back and even at the third row would not have any problems with a hot uh, summer day here in Manila because of all of these AC vents. You also have a 12 volt uh, charging port here at the center, but other than that, well, you also get some isofix tethers as well if you have small kids. And most likely you will have small kids because while well, you're watching this video of the XL7. Now let's try to check out the third row guys and see what kind of space the people who are relegated to the last row would uh, get. So I'm seated now the third row of the XL7 and surprise, surprise guys, this has a very serviceable third row guys. I'm five foot six as I mentioned and right now you could see my, uh, I still have maybe around two inches of space in terms of my knees before it touches well the, the second row seat back and I got a good amount of headroom as well. I'm calculating around four inches of headroom before my head touches the headliner as well. It doesn't feel too claustrophobic here owing to the fact that you've got a decent size window here at the back seat. And it's a little bit of a theater uh, style seating here because I'm a little bit more elevated than the second row passengers. The good thing here as well is that you got, as I mentioned, that row of uh, four AC vents up there at the top on the ceiling and that should be able to hit me back here and keep me cool and comfortable as well. You also have a cup holder here and another 12 volt charging port as well. So the people at the third row seats wouldn't feel too sorry for themselves while they are riding at the back of the XL7. Now at this point guys, we'll now hop back into the driver's seat and take this baby out for a short drive just to show you what kind of driving impression we could get from the XL7. Alright guys, so we're now behind the wheel of the Suzuki XL7 and right off the bat, I could tell you that you have a good and high seating position in this car. Your visibility is fantastic. Forward visibility is what you'd expect from an MPV. Your windows are also large and very serviceable guys. The seats though are quite, kind, kind of firm, but they're not firm to the point that, well, they're gonna be like hard on your ass. It's not guys. The seats are supportive. You do get some support as well on your lower back. Not as much as some of the other car brands, but decent enough well, to be, uh, to be noticeable as well. One of the first things that I noticed while driving this baby is how much low-end torque you get, well, from down low. This is perfectly adequate when it comes to city driving, hauling uh, in a group of seven people with you, including the driver. This baby has a good uh, transmission tuning, especially at the low end. Granted, of course, when you start stepping on the gas, it's not really gonna give you that kind of a brutal acceleration that you'd expect from more powerful vehicles. But then the XL7 is still an MPV, a practical MPV at that, so you don't really expect it 
well, to accelerate like a sports car. Let's try the acceleration now. Yeah. It's decent enough that it won't leave you hanging when you're accelerating, let's say, up an uphill or when you're carrying a full load. But it's not seat in your pants type of acceleration, which is also totally expected in this uh, category. Now, one of the advantages that you get for having such uh, skinny tires is that your turn in is pretty sharp. And because of that, well, the steering response of the XL7 is quite uh, sharper than the other MPVs that I've driven. Those 195 tires are really giving me a decent level of turn in when it comes to steering response. And for me, I'd rather have that because this baby doesn't really need to have you know, wider tires because you don't really expect to go like uh, up to 200 kilometers per hour in this thing. Of course, having said that, when you go up to triple digit speeds, like if you go up to illegal uh, speed levels already, then you'd expect that this baby might be a little bit more on the jittery side. Unfortunately, since this is just a quick test drive, I wouldn't be able to test out its highway driving manners. Now, when it comes to suspension, well, the XL7 is still an MPV, and that means that most of the imperfections of the road are uh, transferred inside your cabin. You could hear a little bit of road noise, and you could feel all of these uh, tiny bumps here and there inside your XL7. You shouldn't really expect like uh, premium crossover levels of plushness or premium luxury van levels of plushness in this cabin because, well, it is still a practical people mover. Now, there are some reviewers who say that the suspension and the ride of the XL7 is a little bit on the stiff side. Now, yes, it is a little bit stiff, but I don't think it's that much different from a regular SUV. And guys, we have to also remember that the XL7 is trying to be an SUV. So if you want to be an SUV, you don't, you don't only have to have the looks, you also have to have that uh, ride feel as well. And when it comes to the ride, yes, the XL7 doesn't ride like a sedan. It doesn't ride like a luxury van. It rides like an SUV, which means that it's a little bit firm, it's a little bit stiff, and in terms of harshness, well, you could expect a little bit of harshness as well in the overall ride of your XL7. Because yes, it is trying to be an SUV. In fact, in that level, it's already like an SUV. Now, when it comes to braking, well, this uh, XL7 brakes like a vehicle that has rear drum brakes at the back, which means that you have to allocate a little bit more of a braking distance if you want to bring this baby to a full stop. Granted, given the fact that it only has around 103 horses in terms of overall power, you don't really need to have very strong brakes to bite down on this vehicle and slow it down. So when it comes to your usual day-to-day -day, uh, practical city driving runabout type of uh, drives and uh, duties, the braking system of the XL7 is perfectly adequate, guys. Perfectly adequate. Now overall, guys, the XL7 is a practical and fantastic uh, MPV that feels like an SUV when you're driving it. Your seating position is quite high. You've got the ride and the suspension quality of an SUV, which means that more uh, road imperfections are being transferred to you in the cabin. And well, you've got a perfectly adequate engine in terms of power for your normal day-to-day -day city drives. Yes, the XL7 really presents itself to be quite a practical and viable option in the MPV market. The Suzuki XL7 may be based on the Ertiga, but it has a totally different personality that leans more towards the sporty and muscular side, pretty much like me. In fact, it has accomplished its mission of looking like and driving like an SUV rather than an MPV. This is one good-looking dad mobile that I wouldn't mind driving on a daily basis. Once again, thank you guys for watching one of my car reviews. If you like this review, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button as well. I promise you guys, I will make it worth your while if you subscribe to Reagan's Rides. I'm Reagan, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.